Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode, I'll be discussing the hugely anticipated and long-awaited sequel to the 1996 smash hit sports comedy Space Jam with the 2021 mixed live action and animated movie Space Jam A New Legacy as directed by Malcolm D. Lee. In this movie, um, we bring back all of our favourite Looney Tunes and a number of other Warner Brothers properties. Well, practically all of them, to be quite fair. Uh, for one further madcap adventure and one more high-stakes game of basketball in order to stop an egotistical and tyrannical villain by the name of Al G. Rhythm, as played by Don Cheadle, an algorithm within the Warner Brothers server who has basically got too big for his own boots with ideas of grandeur above his station. The idea is practically the same as the original Space Jam movie. Take one basketball player at the top of their game. This time around, this mantle is passed to one LeBron James. Transport them to the world of the Looney Tunes and have them bit train a big, you know, rag bag team of misfits to play the biggest high stakes game of basketball of their life. As Bugs astutely states in the movie, sounds familiar. Well, of course. Well, this time round, um, although the overall premise is, is the same, um, the setting is somewhat different. This time being within the Warner Brothers serververse, um, a world within the servers at the Warner Brothers studios where all of their properties, franchises, series, and anything otherwise connected with the studio are stored all headed by the manipulative artificial intelligence algae rhythm. The stakes, well, this time around LeBron James is fighting for his son, Dominic, as played by Cedric Joe, who's been kidnapped, hoodwinked, uh, basically, by the algae rhythm in order uh, and into challenging his dad, basically, into a game of basketball. But not just any game. In fact, they will be playing inside the game that Dominic developed. As the game goes on, it is clear that the scheming algae is not true to his words, and before long, we're not just playing basketball for Dominic's freedom, but in fact the freedom of all, with algae threatening to trap everybody within the serververse forever. Now, funny story, um, <laughs> one at the time, but it was, I think that the Looney Tunes had actually tampered with my satnav. Um, we actually went to see this movie whilst on holiday and had kind of booked to see the film and Odeon Cinema in Leeds, uh, a northernish city in the UK, if, uh, you don't, if you don't know where Leeds actually is. All the tickets were paid for, um, food booked. Indeed, you know, it was a feast, you know, it was hot dogs, popcorn, um, chips, dips, all that. Now, for anybody that may have been to Leeds, um, you may agree, and for those that haven't been to Leeds, the roads, they do look like they have been designed by a five-year-old with a crayon and a spirograph. Um, it is literally the definition of spaghetti junction. Um, in all the years that I've kind of been driving, even to places such as London, Los Angeles, uh, I have never come across a place quite like it. And so navigation in Leeds, for me, uh, at least is quite a daunting task. So a sat-nav is a must. However, it wasn't until we kind of got to the door of the cinema that it suddenly dawned on me. We were in Bradford, um, the city next door, and completely at the wrong cinema, and with only five minutes to spare before our film started. Now at a cinema over another 30 minutes away. Let's just say that I was a little bit red-faced, to say the least, and a few choice words were kind of spoken in the car that night. Given that all in all I had literally spent over a hundred pounds to do all of that, never before have I ever ended up at the wrong cinema, let alone one in a completely different city. Um, you know, I must have I must have been inadvertently clicked on the wrong audience. Um, that's all I can think that happened, but. In the end, after much grovelling and apologising uh, for being completely stupid uh, to the manager at the Bradford Odeon, where we had ended up, um, we, they agreed to honour our tickets and our food orders. So in the end, quite the adventure, uh, quite the mix-up like I've never had before, but all's well that 
ended well. Um, you know, so a massive thank you to the manager at the Bradford Odeon indeed uh, for saving my night and my bacon. Um, anyway, the film, of course. Um, I nearly did forget that I was reviewing a film uh, like I did that night. Now, I have had uh, a lot of mixed thoughts on this one coming from many angles. Um, with reviews I have seen ranging from one through to five stars. Um, so indeed, it does seem like a very kind of divisive film. Personally, I've got to say, and it's probably not a shocker to anybody, I loved it. Uh, I was probably the only one in the cinema in hysterics, though. Um, maybe it was just the kind of night that I was having already. Um, but indeed, I had a great time with it. And, and for me, this was more in keeping with what I would have wanted for the original Space Jam. And for that matter of fact, it's follow-up, uh, Looney Tunes Back in Action. I think the most prominent thing people and indeed other critics have taken umbrage with is the fact that this film is very self-indulgent and absorbed with regards to Warner Brothers. Being focused in their serververse, uh, they have literally used hundreds upon hundreds of cameos and references to pretty much any Warner Brothers property that you can think of. Okay, so yes, it is pretty much a shameless promotion of Warner Brothers products. Um, but it's non-apologetic for that, uh, you know, for what it is. And for me, in the context of the story that it presented, it is fantastic. And I think it opened up some fantastic opportunities with the way that they presented the Looney Tunes, you know. It gave a different perspective to have the tunes turn up in some of Warner Brothers' most memorable films. Um, you know, giving them more to kind of interact with and indeed giving the animators a chance to play around with the formula of these different properties. Seeing Duck Dodgers face up against Superman was absolutely ace. Um, I, 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 I mean, for me, I love picking out the different movies and um, the different animation and movie styles. It was awesome in, in that respect, definitely right up my street. And, and the fact that we get to visit some of these with the Looney Tunes just added tenfold to, to, to my enjoyment. The mix of animation styles uh, is subtle, but excellently done in the main. Mixed with the kind of live action, we have a true mix of traditional and computer animation. And this change is dependent on the franchise we visit, and indeed as we kind of enhance during the kind of the big all-stakes basketball game, much to the horror of the Looney Tunes themselves. Even LeBron was animated for a while, um, and it was again great to see how this changed as he interacted with those different worlds, as Bugs went on his way to collect the other tunes for the team. It added a different kind of twist, I thought, to the basic premise, which allowed for even, you know, even greater tune interaction. We had a much more concise introduction to LeBron. Um, he's good at basketball, that's what we need to know, and basketball's his life. We get these key points in the intro and then we, we move forward. Indeed, I really do think LeBron gave a much more rounded and believable performance. Sorry, Michael. Uh, this time around, although basketball was a key part of the movie, it didn't pander just to its fans. This was set up to be quickly accessible by all its audience. LeBron's interaction with his son was a bit sterile, perhaps, a bit wooden, but by the end we, we did understand just how much Dominic indeed meant to LeBron and, and, and what he was prepared to do to get him back. Once you did kind of strip away all the promotional aspects of the film, the story did feel more sincere, more emotional both from LeBron's point of view and indeed that from the tunes, especially Bugs whose journey to get back all of his all of his friends, basically, is what some of the film is about, is very heartfelt. It still takes a time to get to the Looney Tunes, um, but once we're there, it never lets up. And this time around, for as ludicrous as they are, they do have more substance um, and more presence, especially, again, Bugs. You know, he's kind of the central icon of the film. And more integral parts within the story fall to the tunes this time around. A lot more is kind of made of their comedy this time around um, and it's put to excellent effort throughout. There are some fantastic golden moments uh, that act back to some of the uh, original cartoons, you know. 
In fact, Roadrunner and Willie E. Coyote ended up stealing the show uh, in the end for me. I was I was literally laughing my pants off with their own kind of brand of teamwork. Uh, they are simply hilarious together. They really are. And unlike the original, I really did enjoy the grand game of basketball. This had much more pizzazz and much more spirit and tons more style points. It was the true centrepiece of the movie and involved plenty of toon styled antics once they were let loose. Um, I mean, the game lasts the best part of about 45 minutes. Now that is taking it to the max. You kind of certainly feel more involved and indeed thoroughly satisfied by the end. For me, I must admit, it did seem like it was trying to do too much all at the same time. Uh, admitted, um, each of the Looney Tunes movies kind of, has kind of suffered from that, I think, in some fashion as they've gone through. The plot was fairly straightforward here and for the most part reasonably su succinct. However, the over-reliance on technology meant that to achieve its goals, the level of tech used and available almost kind of seemed like it increased exponentially and conveniently as the film progressed. Going from an AI with an ego uh, to being able to zap a couple of people into the mainframe to practically zapping half the population of the planet into the servers all from a camera on a mobile phone. And, and so in this it can be overly far-fetched, um, even for the Looney Tunes, you know? But it does work for the most part and, and pretty much delivers what it says on the tin. Moreover, this actually feels like a film. Um, it still wobbles in places, don't get me wrong, um, but this is at least a feature and not just a series of crazy antics strung together. But the Looney Tunes and their human co-actors uh, actually feel like they're working together. The Looney Tunes feel like actual characters. I also love the way that it just doesn't completely wreck on the previous two movies. Uh, they are both acknowledged to some degree, not quite in a strict canon um, and more so the original Space Jam than Back in Action. Um, I think Back in Action is more blink and you miss it. In fact, it was Oliver that pointed it out. Um, but the references are there. Um, almost like it's accepted that each almost exists within its own universe, but still connected somehow, in a totally self-aware reality, perhaps. The soundtrack's pretty cool too. Um, along with the animation, it takes a number of some of the greatest themes um, to some of the, you know, to some of Warner's hottest properties. Again, it's quite the eclectic mix of styles uh, as a result, but there is almost always so much going on um, in the film, the music, the styles, the animation. It has its own quirky beats mixed with a lots and lots of Looney Tunes throwbacks. Overall, do I believe that this will ever be as iconic uh, or as even as memorable as the original Space Jam movie? Well, no. Um, that film has now been beloved for a generation at least, you know? This film, as quirky as it is, is probably only going to be a piece of momentary fun. Um, but for what it was, and for the fact that it had me in hysterics, that's more than okay with me. Um, it is fun. It is corny. It's wacky. It is full of loony tunes. And I'll always have my own wacky adventure to remember it by. So. That brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, true reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you here at SciFest Movie Talk. Definitely love to have you back. But most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>